Good day, everybody. Once again, we are back together. And uh, thank you for uh, joining us on our YouTube channel. And uh, if you're new, uh, please just hit that subscribe button. Hopefully, we've uh, produced enough content to, to, to convince you that uh, it's worth staying on this channel. Hey, um, And uh, of course, uh, you can also hit the notification bell just to alert you every time that we are posting a new lesson. All right, and if you need to get in touch with us uh, for assistance in mathematics or physical science, our email address is info at mlongisinkosi.co.za. All right, and so today we are starting on a new topic, and that is calculus. Uh, I'm excited to start this one, and uh, hopefully you'll stay for the rest of the series, okay? Uh, I'll try to develop it, uh, um, you know, such that you are able to understand it fully. And today we're going to be exploring just the concept of first principles or of take of differentiating using first principles. But first of all, what I want us to do. All right, let's begin here. When we're talking about uh, differentiation. OK, so uh, let's take just for argument's sake, if we've got a curved function. OK, um, something that looks like this, it, it may look uh, differently. Um, Right, so let's say there's our x uh, axes and our y axes. Um, so there's x and there's y over there. All right, so when we look at this particular function, so we can get a gradient between two points. And let's just take, uh, say, maybe that point and that point over there. Right, so if we took the gradient between two points, what we end up with is a secant. Uh, if you look at that, so what a secant is, it's a line that um, cuts, you know, uh, uh, into two or more points uh, on a function. So if we decided, okay, we're going to call that point, let's say X, um, and that point over there, that would be uh, X plus H. So uh, H would be the difference between the two points. Okay, so H would be the difference between the two points. So such that this would be X plus H. Now, uh, of course, the corresponding Y value, uh, let's call it FX, uh, if the function here is F of X, right? So that means the corresponding Y value here would be F of X uh, plus H. Okay, now, um, the problem is that if we look at those two points, what we get, okay? Remember, when we, whenever you take the gradient uh, M, that would be the change in Y over the change in X. So what you get is F of X uh, plus H, right? Minus F of X, okay? Divided by, so that's change in Y. So take the Y's. Okay, divided by change in x, of course, that will be uh, f, I mean, x plus h uh, minus x in this particular case. Now, when you take the gradient, what you end up with is what we call the average gradient. Okay, why? Because that's not the actual, remember, the gradient keeps changing uh, between those two points. The gradient uh, keeps changing uh, in that particular case. Uh, it is not the actual gradient. Now, what can we do to actually get the gradient at a particular point? We use the same principle and you say, well, what if we try to make the value of h as small as possible, such that if I keep making h as small as possible, I'm going to try and uh, if the value of h is smaller, then what happens is I now start moving more from a secant and I keep doing that until I get to a tangent. Now remember, what is a tangent? It's a line that touches, uh, you know, a, a function once or it's a line that whether it's a circle or whether it's a graph, whether it's a curve, whatever the case is, it's a line that only touches once. So you get to a point where you've got a tangent, okay? And that is why we're going to actually explain something just now um, that when we deal with calculus, okay, now note, whenever 
uh, I'm asked in any graph to get f of, let's say our graph is f of x uh, for argument's sake, right? Now, when they ask me to get what is f at 4, what is that? This simply means this is the y value at x is equals to 4, right? So this would be the y value, right, where x uh, is equal to 4, right? But what does it mean when I'm getting f dash of 4? And by the way, f prime, uh, that's the um, symbol that we use for, you know, uh, the derivative, right? So what does it mean when I get f dash 4? This would be, now please I want you to listen carefully, right? So this would be the derivative at x is equals to 4. But what it simply means is that this is the gradient of the tangent, gradient of the tangent at x is equal to 4. Right. So in this case, what you're getting is it's the gradient of the tangent at x is equals to four. Um, in this case, I want you to please note that once we start talking uh, derivative, remember that we associate this with the gradient. OK. Right. So this is the gradient of the tangent at x is equals to four. Now. Um, we can do this in different ways. We're going to deal with differentiation a little bit later on, all right? But what I would like for us to do is explore uh, what we're talking about there uh, when we're talking about, uh, you know, um, uh, taking the, uh, the first principles, right? Now, in this case, what we do to get uh, the derivative? Remember, we said f dash. What it simply means is that you are taking the derivative. So what we simply say is that f dash of a function, right, would be equal to, now, first of all, we say it's the limit as h tends to zero. Now, if you remember what we said, we said h tends to zero, it means that we are trying to narrow that value of h to be smaller and smaller up until we move from it being a secant uh, to it being a tangent, okay? So we say it's the limit as h tends to zero of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by, in this case, divided by h. And remember, how did we get that h? If you noticed, uh, we would cancel that and we would have uh, h over there, right? Now, um, so we're going to just explore a few examples where we are going to uh, use, in this case, um, uh, first principles in order to find the derivative. Let's get into our first example. All right, so our first example says um, determine f dash x, the derivative, from first principles, and you need to look out for that word from first principles. If they didn't say it, of course, we can do it uh, just the ordinary way, and we'll, we'll discuss that a little later on. Right, so um, they said from first principles, if f of x is 1 minus x squared. Now, remember, so what we simply do in this case, uh, we're going to remind ourselves, remember f dash x uh, in this case would be equal to the limit, right, as h tends to 0. Now, you do not remove this until you get to the point where you've just uh, clarified everything, but uh, we'll get to that in just a few Right, so that's going to be x plus h minus f of x, okay, divided by h. Now, um, for as long as we are not substituting a, a zero for that h, uh, we are not removing this expression here. So this is going to be limit as h tends to zero, okay? What is our f of x plus h? So it means that uh, in your f of x equation, you are going to substitute x plus h everywhere that you see x, right? So this is going to be, uh, that's 1 minus, where I see x, I'm going to put x plus h squared. Remember, expression was 1 minus x squared. Minus, what is our f, uh, f of x? Now, please remember to put that in a bracket. So that's 1 minus x squared. 
okay, divided by, uh, in this case, h. Now, we're going to try and simplify everything until we get to a point where, uh, remember, what we're trying to do is uh, we need to finally remove that h in the denominator because once we... Uh, um, you know, substitute for h is equal to zero, then what it simply means is that uh, the, uh, I mean, our, our, our solution becomes undefined, right? So we're trying to get rid, that's what we're trying to ultimately do, get rid of that h in the denominator. So let's simplify. So remember, we don't remove this expression as long as we have not substituted, right? So this is going to be one minus. Now, uh, um, let's try and uh, uh, expand this. So this is going to be uh, x squared, all right, plus 2xh plus h squared. Okay, right. And then remember, this is going to be minus 1 plus x squared divided by h. Okay, so... We're still going to try and simplify so this limit as h tends to zero. Remember, we have not yet substituted. So that's 1 minus x squared. Okay, I've got 1 minus x squared minus 2xh minus h squared minus 1 plus x squared divided by h. Now let's try and get rid of... Uh, um, you know, what we can get rid of. Okay, I see I've got a 1 and minus 1 there, so we can cancel those. Okay, I've got a minus x squared and a positive x squared there. All right, so in this case, what are we left with at the top? Right, so you can see you, we've got uh, minus 2xh minus h squared, so why don't we take out h as a common factor? So I'm going to take out h as a common factor there uh, on those two. So that becomes minus 2x minus h, right? Okay, divided by uh, h. You see, now I'm violating my own rule. So limit as h tends to zero. Okay, so what do we do? Now, do you see, we can now get rid of that h. That divided by that. Okay, now because we're getting to that point where we can substitute, right? So we can substitute for that h there. Um, so let us now substitute 0 for h. And I don't need to write this expression when I do that. So now I can say, well, this is 2 times, uh, uh, sorry, minus 2x rather, uh, minus 0. Okay, I'm substituting 0 for h. And what do I end up with? It means that I've got minus 2x. And that is my derivative uh, for that particular function that I had there. Okay, right. Let's take another example. All right. Now let's look at the next one. Uh, again, they say determine the, um, uh, the derivative f dash x from first principles if f of x is x cubed. Right, so in this case, again, we said uh, if you want to take the derivative, you're simply going to say, well, this is going to be limit as h tends to 0, okay, of f of x plus h minus f of x divided by h. Now, remember, what we always try to strive towards is just removing that h in the denominator. So let's do that. Uh, um, so let's try and expand this. So this is going to be limit as h tends to 0. Remember, we don't remove this expression until we get to that point where we uh, substitute for h, right? So x uh, f of x is x cubed. So this is going to just become x plus h cubed. So everywhere we see x, we substitute with uh, x plus h in that case. So that's going to be minus, uh, uh, this was supposed to be x cubed rather, divided by h. Now, uh, what's left for us to do is to try and um, simplify this as much as possible. Okay, so this is going to be, this is the same as x plus h 
uh, into now x plus h squared i'm just going to say this is x squared plus 2xh plus h squared minus x cubed right uh, all over h now uh, all i've just simply done there uh, was just to take x plus h and x plus h squared right we need to always find a way to make this as quick as possible so i took x plus h squared and that resulted in x squared plus 2xh plus h squared okay so uh yeah plus h squared uh, in that case and that gave us the result that we got there right so now what we're trying to do is um uh get to that point where we can cancel the h so at the end of the day we've got limit as h tends to zero okay so now let's try and expand what we had there at the top so we've got x times x squared this is going to be x cubed this is x multiplied by 2xh that's going to be plus 2x squared h and then uh, x multiplied by h squared this is going to be plus x h squared right and then let's get to the next one so this is plus h okay so let me just do it in the yellow so we're going to have h times x squared so this is going to be uh, h x squared okay and then we've got h multiplied by 2xh okay which is that one and that's going to give us plus uh, 2xh squared plus 2xh squared and then we've got h times h squared which is plus h cubed this is minus x squared uh, x cubed rather why do i keep saying x uh, x squared so this is minus x cubed all right divided by h okay so now uh let's see if uh, in fact first of all that should have been x cubed as well uh, not x squared okay let's see if i got everything else right okay right so now uh we know it's limit uh limit as h tends to zero again remember you do not remove this until you have substituted okay so let's try getting rid of what we can so we know that goes with that guy okay and um which other one okay uh so what we can do uh so we've got h x h squared h x squared x okay so i see that we've got uh, some common factors there uh, you've got an x squared term there and another x squared term there okay so i am going to and i've got an x term here uh, i'm gonna do it in yellow and another x term uh yeah another x term there so let's try and simplify that so this is going to be a uh, 2x x squared h or 2h x squared it doesn't really matter so this is going to simply be plus that other one in green so this is going to be 3h x squared right and then i'm going to also be adding those x terms as well okay so this is going to be uh plus okay another x h squared 2 x h squared so this is going to be plus 3 uh, x h squared or you can say 2 h squared x okay and then so i've i'm done with those ones and then i've got plus h cubed okay right and all of that divided by h and what can we do now we can now um, obviously take out h as a common factor okay so if i take out h as a common factor i'm left with 3x squared plus 
uh, 3H, um, yeah, 3HX plus H squared, okay? Right, and in this case, divided by H, and what can I do? I can actually cancel that H there. Now we can substitute for zero, okay? So we can substitute H is zero. So in this case, I've got, okay, 3X squared, okay, plus three times zero X plus zero squared, okay? So in this case, what does that give us? We end up with uh, just simply 3x squared. And that is our derivative. All right. So uh, perhaps uh, I will just leave it there. Perhaps we'll do some more examples uh, in the near future. Okay. So uh, in fact, uh, I just want to leave you with one exercise that you can try on your on your own okay so uh, if you can uh, please just get me the derivative from first principles now if f of x uh, is given to be okay um, 1 minus 3x squared okay please get me um, in this case from first principles the derivative in that case all right Okay, uh, for now, I am going to leave it there. Uh, thank you for watching once again. And please don't forget to hit that like button if you like this lesson. And don't forget to share as well and tell as many people as you possibly can about our channel. And, um, and don't forget to also subscribe. Okay, for those of you who haven't hit that subscribe button. Otherwise, from me for now, I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.